Normal regression analysis is a very convenient technique because it will always give you some results. Maximum likelihood estimation on the other hand can sometimes fail and uh, to understand why it fails will allow you to troubleshoot your models and make informed decisions on how to get the model to work. In this video I will show you uh, an example of logistic regression analysis. The purpose of the video is not to demonstrate uh, the logistic regression analysis feature specifically but more generally what could cause a maximum likelihood estimation process to fail. Let's take a look at this data and um, we have eight observations x1, x2, two independent variables, dependent variable y that receives values of 1 and 0. And uh, we'll run a logistic regression analysis explaining why using x1 and x2 and see what happens. So the analysis setup is here. We'll be using two different software just to demonstrate software differences. So this is R and this is theta syntax for running this, this model. And the results are in. So, so what happens? What, uh, what do we note first? The first thing we know that there's uh, lots of things are missing from this state output. We don't have significance tests, we don't have uh, standard errors, uh, we don't have uh, the, uh, the overall model test. So we have results that are missing. Another thing and uh, is that is that uh, the software give us different results. So R says that the effect of x1 is 15 and uh, Stata says that the effect of x1 is uh, 33 and the effect of x2 is 30 and the effect of x2 according to R is 6. So these are significantly uh, or substantially different results because normally uh, we, if we interpret the coefficients using odds ratios we exponentiate them. So uh, the difference between 15 and 30 is on an exponential scale that's, that's a huge difference. So, so what do we do? Do we just uh, pick one of, of the, uh, these two sets of estimates and report that set as if uh, there was no problem. Well, uh, we need to understand what's going on. Also, uh, we know that the, the likelihood is zero here and uh, the likelihood, the log likelihood is zero here as well, which means that the likelihood is one. That's uh, a very unusual scenario. So uh, it means that uh, getting this kind of data from this model uh, would be uh, 100% probability. So uh, getting any other observations, any other values for the y variable would be impossible from this model. And uh, you don't have that kind of perfect model. So, so what's going on? Then we also have uh, this, this warning and uh, the successes and failures are completely determined. And uh, R gives uh, a bit more, a bit less user-friendly warning, just uh, numerical uh, probabilities, numerical 0 and 1 occurred. The uh, important thing about warnings is that when you get a warning that is software telling you that there's something going on that you should pay attention to. So warnings are not some, some inconveniences that you can just ignore and then uh, report the results if you got any. The warning is something that you need to uh, then spend some time understanding what is the warning telling you and uh, why is the warning occurring and then what you can do about the warning. You should not report any analysis with a warning unless you know what the warning is and have made an explicit decision not to care about the warning. Generally we want these warnings to go away. So, so what's, what's the cause? Let's take a look at the, uh, the data set a bit more closely and uh, in this case the problem is the variable x1 so we can just take x2 out. What do we see here with x1 and, and, and y? We see that uh, when uh, x1 receives values greater than 4, y is always 1. And when x1 receives value less than 4, y is always 0. So uh, the x value here perfectly predicts the value of y. So that's, that's the thing. And why that would be problematic for maximum likelihood estimation. Let's take a look at how maximum likelihood estimation works. So this is the, uh, the R analysis and maximum likelihood estimation always starts with some kind of initial guess. So the computer is fitting an S-curve because this is a logistic regression analysis and the first guess is that the S is, is quite, um, it, it's, it's not very steep, and, uh, but it goes up. So uh, it goes up from, from, for x1 instead of going down. And um, the estimation then proceeds by trying different val values for the, for the coefficient x so that uh, the curve would fit the data better. 
And in this case, uh, we originally had the curve fitting here. So it predicts this observation to have uh, about 60% probability. And then we make the curve steeper and steeper. We can see that this observation is explained or predicted better and better. The the problem here is that uh, there, is, there is no limit on how steep the curve can be. So the steeper you make the curve, the better it predicts these observations. And uh, you can make it indefinitely steep. So uh, there is no limit how much you can increase the x1 coefficient here and it will always make the curve a bit steeper. So we can see that it's, it's not straight up yet. We could still make it a few pixels more, more steeper. So, um, the, the coefficient of x1 just goes to infinity if we allow the process to continue. What will happen to the likelihood or the log likelihood in this case, it will go to zero. And uh, it, it gets to zero when every observation is predicted perfectly. So uh, we don't have a maximum or for this likelihood because the likelihood can never be exactly zero. It just goes to very, very close to zero, but we can always make the curve a little bit steeper to make the like log likelihood closer to zero. So the, the maximum of this like log likelihood here does not exist. The consequence is that the maximum likelihood estimates for this model don't exist either. So uh, Maximum likelihood estimate is indeterminate because uh, making x1 larger and larger will always fit the data a bit better. The, the increase in fit is marginal, but we can't say that uh, x1 coefficient 50 uh, would be the correct value because uh, the coefficient of uh, 51 would fit the data better. So the, uh, the estimates don't exist. So what do you do? And uh, this is a scenario that is so well understood that statistical software have checks for this. So this is for Stata user manual. And if we run the logistic model without the as is modifier that I had in before to, to force it to run, Stata says that no, we can't run it because our x1 predicts the data perfectly. The estimates don't exist. And uh, they have an explanation about it. So there are a couple of pages explanation in the user manual uh, what causes this problem, how Stata deals with it, and what you can do about it. The, the problem is that uh, not all possible scenarios are programmed into your, into your statistical software. So there are scenarios where maximum likelihood estimation can fail and there is no specific check. And then it will just fail and uh, you have uh, no warning indicating why it failed. The perfect prediction that's well understood, so you can rely on software catching up. But now let's take a look at another pro, uh, problem where the software doesn't catch it before estimates. So this is another variant of the same analysis. We add one more observation. So we add ninth observation with our values of x1 at uh, 11 and x2 at 0, which is the same values that we had for the eighth observation, but they are the y variable resists the value of 0. So now we cannot predict perfectly because uh, the prediction calculated from x1 and x2 is always the same. And if we predict one perfectly, then we don't predict zero and vice versa. So we can't predict perfectly using this data. So what will happen is that uh, the perfect prediction check will, will uh, not trigger. Stata will try to estimate it. R will try to estimate it as well. And uh, we again get a warning. So we have uh, Convergence not achieved warning. So Stata tried to uh, estimate it couldn't find a maximum of the likelihood. It went through 1600 iterations, which is the default limit, and then it just gave up. You can also, of course, increase the limit, have Stata try 10,000 different sets of estimates. It will still cannot find the, uh, the maximum because for this model it doesn't exist either. So um, Stata tries, gives up, and uh, so, so what do we do about it? We see that we don't have standard errors for, for one of the parameters. That's an indication that we have a problem that we have to deal with, at least because we want to report that the, the standard error, or if not that, then at least the p-value, and we have nothing to report. So that the missing standard errors indicate that there's some kind of problem. We can see also that there are, the likelihood here says that it's, it's not concave, and that gives us some information that is useful for troubleshooting. I will not go through the uh, troubleshooting procedure in this video, but just to demonstrate what's available for you, what's the, what's, uh, what the not concave means.
when we estimate maximum likelihood, then uh, we, we, we do trial and error. This is from the video where I demonstrated the maximum likelihood estimation of the population mean using these data. So we can see that uh, when the value is 2, 3 and 4, when the values are 2, 3 and 4, then uh, a good estimate for the population mean is 3. And that's actually the maximum likelihood estimate. If we try any other values to the likelihood function, we get uh, smaller likelihoods. We have the actual likelihood here and then we have uh, the log likelihood here. What's important about the log likelihood that it's, it's a curve that uh, bends down. So it kind of curves down. And uh, we, we say that this is a, a concave curve. So it, it's a curve that curves down. And uh, the concave curve has uh, the second derivative which uh, quantifies the curvature here always negative. So if you have a curve that is concave then the second derivatives are negative. If the second derivative is negative and this is concave then we know that there's a peak somewhere and that the peak is our maximum likelihood estimate. What will happen is that if this curve for example is, is flat here then it's, it's not concave because it's not bending down all the time. And uh, we wouldn't have a maximum of likelihood because we have multiple different values of, of, uh, of the parameter, the mean estimate of the mean, that are equally good for the maximum likelihood perspective. Of, or also we could have a curve that goes uh, down first and then curves up. So that would not be concave either. So that's uh, what the non-concave means. The maximum likelihood is not something that is easy for us to estimate. We can check uh, what's actually the problem by looking at uh, the matrix of the second derivatives here which tell us uh, how, how strongly this curves down and we can see that there are a couple of zeros there. So we have these zeros here and that indicates that we have a problem uh, with these, these uh, parameters. The troubleshooting and exact interpretation of this is something that I will leave uh, for another video. Okay, so then let's take a look at uh, the, uh, the problem. We have uh, Missing standard errors here, which is an indication that we need to do something, definitely. And we have a warning that uh, two fa three failures and two successes completely determined. The, uh, the logical thing to do next is to uh, ask which two and which three. And uh, to get which observations are predicted uh, perfectly, we can use the model, even if it's not converged, we can use the model to calculate the actual predictions. So we can see here that predicted values for these uh, three zeros are exactly zeros. For these two, the predicted values are exactly ones. And that's, that's the warning. And uh, the predicted value for this is uh, very close to zero. So if we would allow Stata to go on forever the, doing the estimation, it would probably estimate or predict this to be zero as well and this to be one. So we have basically seven observations that are uh, perfectly predicted and two that are not. So, uh, so what's going on here? It's not perfect prediction because these are not predicted perfectly. They can't. And for that reason, Stata doesn't catch the problem. The logistic regression model with more than one variable, two variables, can be understood as uh, this kind of surface. So we have x1 here, we have x2 here, and then we have the y on this axis. And we can see how uh, the observations depend on, on x1 and x2. They are the circles here are the values that are actual, actual values, the ones. The circles down here are the actual values of zeros. And the position of the circle indicates there are values of x1 and x2 variables for that observation. Then the cross here is, is the predicted value on the surface. When we do maximum likelihood estimation, we want to adjust the surface by adjusting the coefficients of x1 and x2 so that the, uh, the predicted values are as close as the observed values as possible. And what will happen again that if we make this surface indefinitely steep, so we can make it as steep as possible, and, uh, but this one observation is always, the predicted value will always be in the middle of the surface and it can be predicted perfectly because uh, you can't predict one and zero at the same time. So there, this uh, set of x1 is 11, x2 is zero, corresponds with two different values of y. So that's why you can predict perfectly. But the problem is the same. Uh, the coefficients of uh, x1 and x2 uh, grow large. The interest goes uh, to, to, uh, toward minus infinity and the log likelihood uh, increases without limit. So you can always make 
the, uh, the surface a bit steeper and then uh, it'll fit the data a bit better but there's no, no limit on how large x1 and x2 and how small the interest can be. So what do you do with these problems? There are uh, four options how you can actually uh, use the analysis and uh, option one just if you use data and you didn't do the R analysis you wouldn't have noticed that the software gave radically different results. Choose the got one, the results that you got, ignore the warning and present the results and in your paper. I can't tell you how common that is but I'm pretty sure some people will do that. So uh, understanding the warnings requires effort and if you have some estimates that you could report and not go through the extra effort, some people probably will just do that. That's a bit unethical because the software with the warning tells you that there's a problem that you should pay attention to and then you're ignoring evidence of a problem and reporting the results as if there was no problem. The second alternative is, is trial and error. This is something that I have done a lot before I, I started to uh, think that maybe I should understand what the computer is doing. So you just try, uh, you drop cases, uh, you drop variables until you uh, get the warning to disappear. So, so you run and run and uh, trial and error without understanding why the, sometimes the error appears, sometimes it doesn't and then you pick one of the analysis uh, that doesn't produce it error. This is a bit better because at least you're trying to do something for the problem but this uh, trial and error uh, blindly could lead you with a suboptimal model. For example uh, you're dropping a control variable because the model doesn't converge because of the control there and then uh, instead of, of uh, getting the model to converge with the control you are doing a model that doesn't control for some explanation that you would really like to control. So this is not an ideal case. There are the third alternative is a bit better. So if you use, for example, logistic regression a lot, this perfect prediction issue that I demonstrated here is a well-known thing. So um, any decent book on logistic regression analysis will tell you at least the first case, but probably also the second case. Stata user manual will explain you both cases that I demonstrated and, and what Stata does on in those scenarios and why. So you can try and uh, learn each special case and how to deal with them separately. And it works if you just uh, want to use a, a small uh, number of analysis in your life. The problem is that uh, the special cases for different analysis, for example, if you do negative binomial regression analysis, there are different special cases. So uh, the number of special cases that you have to learn is, is quite large. Then uh, the fourth option is to understand the estimation principles. So, uh, what do the, uh, the second derivatives and uh, the likelihood, what do they mean, how do they depend on the uh, parameter values that the computer is currently trying and then, then you can see what's, what's the problem. So this is of course more difficult but in the long run it'll make you, uh, it'll make you a better researcher because you can do diagnostics for your model in a way that just trying to memorizing every special case doesn't allow you to do. So these are the four options uh, that allow you to, to present some results. The one is unethical, unethical to ignore warnings. Trial and error is bad. This is good but it's not uh, the, the ideal case and in ideal case you understand what the software is doing. There's also the fifth option like which is uh, ignore the model. So, uh, so give up, don't do the, the, the model. For example if, if you are just doing a robustness check, you have your main analysis results, no warnings, and then in the robustness check you have uh, where you analyze a different model that's not that important, you get a warning. So uh, should I spend uh, a day or a week at troubleshooting it? Should I spend a month studying first and then a week troubleshooting it? Or should I just uh, leave the analysis out? Leaving a problematic analysis out is it's a better alternative than uh, ignoring the warning, ignoring the problem and reporting the results anyway. I do this, this all the time. When the problem is not important, I don't want to spend my time dealing with the problem. So it's a perfectly viable option. That's always something that you should consider. 